Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can I have my slides, please? Okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, advocate that there should be a single stent in the majority of the cases. And I really want to thank the organizers of this conference for, um, you know, Roxana and Dr. Sharma and Dr. Kinney for inviting me, but I was really dismayed to find out that I was debating Paul because it's not fair. He's brilliant. First of all, he's very handsome, <laughs> but he's also brilliant, successful, and he has friends in high places. And to be honest, my disclosure, I have never uh, taken care of a saint in my life. Not only that, he's like wealthy and innovative, sophisticated, worldly, and that's lead, led to his advanced uh, technical skills in the cath lab. Whereas I grew up on 80 acres. I mean, you may not know this about me, but I'm really just a country bumpkin. In case you can't pick me out, I'm over here on the uh, right hand side. This is my Christmas photo from this year, by the way. And uh, my experience with animals is really going to help me with this debate, to be honest. <laughs> because I can handle most animals, especially Paul. <laughs> and my plan, is, my plan is to come out on top today. <laughs> so Paul's going to try to brainwash you with this DK crush trial, which did show target lesion failure was better with uh, DK crush compared to provisional stunting. But I want to try to poke a few holes in that study. I mean, first of all, all five DK crush trials that have been reported were all done by the same investigator in Nanjing, China. And the question that I have, are these studies even applicable to anywhere in the Western world, but particularly the United States, because look at how long it would take you to even fly from China over to New York. <laughs> and there's not been a single DK crush study uh, anywhere else other than Nanjing, China. And so what do the Western studies show? Well, this is a meta-analysis of the uh, other by and randomized trials, and what they showed is there is a mortality advantage of a single stent strategy at three years. And not only is there a mortality advantage, there was a significant reduction in MACE and a significant reduction in the risk of MI. And this has led to Europeans and most Americans strongly believing that the provisional side branch stent uh, strategy is really considered the standard approach for the majority of bifurcation lesions. So right off the bat, I think that uh, uh, we, know we have a lot of evidence showing that we are uh, superior with a single stent strategy. Now, taking it back to the issue of left main, our study, Excel, uh, also it was not randomized, but what they showed is that a one stent st strategy, shown here in green, is superior to a dedicated two stent strategy at three years of follow-up. And uh, you might, have, might say, well, there is a selection bias to use two stents in patients with tighter lesions or different Medina scores, but the bottom line is by multivariate analysis, a planned two-stent strategy was strongly predictive of three-year adverse outcomes. And not only that, if you put a stent in the circumflex, it does lead to a lot of restenosis. And if you look at uh, this study, the pre-combat trial, which was a left main study, if you use a single stent technique, you can see the restenosis was pretty evenly distributed between the left main, LAD, and circumflex. Whereas if you used a dedicated two stent strategy, uh, you have a lot of restenosis occurring in the circ. In fact, look at this, 17% restenosis, uh, 15% restenosis, depending on the different stent that was used. And so uh, you can be pretty much guarantee yourself of uh, some issues in the circumflex using a two stent strategy. And the other issue that I have is what we don't really even know whether these side branches are truly significant. So you heard us talking today about FFR and IFR. And the bottom line is if you look at lesions, uh, bifurcation lesions that you think are angiographically significant, the bottom line is if you do an FFR, you're going to find that at least 35% of those lesions that would have been stenting, stented by angiographic jailing, ends up uh, not needing a uh, second uh, stent. And so some might argue, well, you know what, a lot of these bifurcation studies might have been LAD diag or uh, some other smaller vessel, and I'm really concerned because this is a left main and the circumflex is big. So the question it comes up, are two stents really required for uh, these large side branches, or if the lesions are longer than just a focal lesion, is it uh, necessary? And you go back to this Nordic uh, bifurcation uh, stent study, and what you see is that there's no differences in mace rates between the two stent versus provisional stent, even if it's a true bifurcation and even if it's a large side branch. And then this particular study
study, what they found is if they had long, diffuse uh, disease in the side branches, there was, a, again, no difference between provisional stent and a systematic two-stent strategy with regard to MACE or revascularization at 12 months. And then this brings me to the next uh, issue. We've done lots of studies looking at the optimal two-stent strategy, but how much data, how many studies have been done looking at provisional stunting, and are we even performing that the best possible way? And, it's, and, it, and it may be likely that the reason that the DK crush uh, study looks superior is because we're not doing a good job at provisional. So the question that I have is, are these side branches even compromised? Because no study has consistently performed IFR or FFR to determine the need to stent that second branch. R and I believe that routinely dilating the second branch could potentially damage that leading, you know, causing restenosis because you've denuded the endothelium. And furthermore, uh, it ends up distorting the main uh, vessel stent. You might have less distortion with kissing balloons, but it's going to be eccentrically expanded. The data don't exp uh, support a final kiss. And then we've not been using the proximal optimization te technique. And just to show you what I'm talking about is if you have a stent, say, here in the left, ma left main go in the LAD, you wire the circ, and then you try to dilate that, what happens is you're pulling the stent away from the opposite wall. And not only that, when you deflate this balloon, if it's NC and you remove it, then it starts moving the up into the left uh, main as well. So it definitely just ends up distorting the uh, vessel that you that you're doing this in, and it's been suggested what you really need to do is not finish with a final kiss, but finish with a, a, a pot or a, a, a final balloon in your main branch vessel. This is an example of what happens when you use these kissing, final kissing balloons, which has been advocated quite a bit for bifurcation stunning and for side branches. And you see it's not a normal shape. It's now a very elliptical shape. It might be made less elliptical if you do this modified uh, um, kiss balloon technique, but the bottom line is that the coronaries don't look like this, and we're creating this artificial appearance. And then finally, I think the data speak for itself. If you look at a meta-analysis uh, of using a single stent and bifurcation lesion and looking at whether that final kiss helps or harms the patient, the bottom line is it does not reduce MACE. There's not one suggestion whatsoever your MACE is going to be reduced. And then if you look at TLR, same story. There's no reduction in TLR. So in my opinion, uh, it could be completely possible that we're harming the patient by doing a final kiss in these provisional uh, stent. So in conclusion, I think it's uh, quite obvious that uh, provisional stenting is a standard. And absolutely, you should uh, stent the main branch only. And now that I've, uh, now that I've uh, showed you all the data, I think we can all agree that I finally tamed the tiger. Paul, and he's, uh, he's eating out of my hand. <laughs> and I hate, uh, and my only disclosure again is that uh, we are actually uh, very close friends. And uh, I think the biggest question that he is going to ask is, what's, what's wrong with kissing? 